What's up, people? Happy Friday. Oh, boy, you're having a great day so far. Let me jump right into this bullshit. Where do I begin? Um, Okay, Mac and Felicia. That reporter that was talking to Mac and Felicia, I would have knocked him the fuck out, too. Like, those comments, they were some insensitive jackasses. Their daughter is missing. And you ask them, what if your daughter isn't coming back? What if your daughter's dead? Are you serious? Why would you say something like that? I would have knocked them the fuck out. I'm glad Mac punched him in his face because he deserved that as a parent. You know, when you're a parent and, and your child, whether they're grown, a kid, whatever, they go missing, they're kidnapped or whatever like that. You don't want somebody coming up to you, a reporter or somebody, anybody saying something disgusting like that. Be, you know, that would make you go crazy because you already have those thoughts in your mind. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if I, I said this a million times before on this video, I hate the what if game. I don't like to play what if I like to live in a moment. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like what if, and you know, when you're going through something like that and I'm pretty sure it's running through Mac and Felicia's mind. What if their daughter something bad does happen to their daughter you know what if their daughter don't come back i'm pretty sure that it is but mac is trying to be positive about this because he knows his daughter and he knows that she's strong and she's gonna come out of this and they trust anna to do her job and get them out of there but i would have knocked that that reporter the fuck out too like you don't say something like that that's so, that's so insensitive and it's disrespectful and it's like come on now have a little bit more, you know, compassion, have some tact about you. Like, where the hell did they find these reporters to ask questions like that? Seriously, I would have knocked you the fuck out. I probably would have shot you. You don't ask me no question like that. Um, Felicia, of course, she has a lot of regret about not being a part of her kid's life growing up. You know, when they were growing up, she wasn't a part of their life. And she has a lot of regret about that. Do I feel bad for Felicia? No, I don't. And I'm going to tell you why I don't feel bad. 13 years ago, she was married to Mac. This was around, they got married 1998, I believe, 1999. And they divorced 13 years ago in 2001. You want to know why? Because she ran off to go follow behind Frisco. That's why I don't have no compassion for Felicia about her sadness and her regrets about not being a better mother to her kids. You made a conscious decision to not be there for your children when they needed you. You made that choice. So I don't have no sympathy for you because that was that was a choice that you made. You chose to run behind their father who was in the WSB traveling all over the world every single day, at, you know, in a mission every day, you chose to be, you know, with him instead of your kids. So I, I don't feel any compassion for you. I, I really don't. And that's my honest opinion. I don't feel no compassion and she ain't going to get no sympathy from me. You could cry me a river. I really don't care. You're not getting no sympathy from me because you made the choice and you left your kids with Mac and had him raise those kids. And I applaud Mac for raising two kids that were not his, but he always loved them as they are his. And I applaud him for that because not many men do that, especially guys. You know, we you know, a lot of men. They don't take care of their 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 kids, you know, let alone kids that are not there. So I applaud him. You know, he deserves a, a goddamn medal taking care of two daughters. Girls are not the easiest to raise. And he raised two of those girls. I mean, he had to deal with them going through, you know, the change of life, you know, with their, you know, periods and boys and dating. And, you know, he had to deal with all that shit by himself. So I applaud him. Mac is a stand up guy taking care of two kids that are not his. I applaud him. I really do. But you know what? He looks at Georgie and Maxie and he never really saw biology, biology as a problem. You know, he looked at those girls like they were his. And I applaud you. Um, Takes a really, you know, strong person to do that. So um, anyway. Maxie got loose and she was running around the clinic trying to find a phone when she went into the room. I thought that was Jason in that room. 
I was about to say, are they going to show Jason this quick? Because Victor had Jason's file on his desk and they were still pictures of Steve Burton. Um, pause. I want to mention something real quick. I am freaking loving this little war that the young and restless in general hospital are having with each other. I'm loving the back and forth between the two of them. So here's an update for those that don't know. This is not, you know, many of you may know this already, but for those who don't know, um, Kelly Sullivan, who used to play Kate Howard slash Connie Falconeri on general hospital. She is officially a part of the cast of the young and the restless. And I had, I bust out laughing when I heard about that story the other day. I was like, I'm loving the tit for tat between the two shows because, you know, why and are they got uh, Steve Burton? They got now they got Kelly Sullivan. And I knew Jill Farron Phelps was going to hit back when she heard Billy Miller join y &R, And I was wondering, when are you going to hit back? And boom, she hit back. So I'm loving this little war. Um, I wonder who else they're going to get. Um, and they got Tristan, you know, wine R got Tristan Rogers. Um, and GH, you know, we got Michelle Stafford. Um, so anyway, so she went into the room and she found Peter Harold senior in the bed. He was in a bed and he called out Felicia, her mother and Levi Dungleman. I am so sick of this idiot. Peter Harold Jr. Jackass. He comes in the room or whatever where Nathan is demanding to know where Maxie is. So he finally found Maxie in his father's room. So his so he was telling him the story about how his father got shot in the head and you know he survived and but the the the, the bullet fragments or whatever was still in his head and then it went to his brain and he became incapacitated. So his father thanked him for bringing Maxie and instructed his son that it's time to kill her. I was like, oh, my God, somebody need to jump in here and do something about this kidnapping because it's time for this storyline to come to an end now. Levi is pissing me off. Um, so. Obrecht, her and Anna were outside in the van or whatever, trying to come up with a plan or whatever to, you know, figure out how to get, you know, Dante and Lulu and everybody out of the damn clinic. So. She told Obrecht to go in there with a listening device. So Obrecht found Victor's office. They're talking or whatever. And she takes the listening device out of her ear. She messes it up. So Anna can't hear what the hell is going on in the office. So she decides to tell Victor the truth about Nathan. That Nathan really is his son. So Nathan got one of the guards and he knocked one of the guards out. And he hand, you know, he knocked one of the guards out, took his key card to get into the room and took the key to unlock himself, to uncuff himself and took the guy gun. So Olbrecht is in Victor's office and Victor was pissed that she kept his son away from him all because of um, Faison. So Nathan goes into the room and points his gun at Victor and Victor tells Nathan that he's not going to shoot his own father. Obrek is a dumb bitch. You kept him away from his son all because of Faison, like seriously, a son of a bitch who could care less about you. Anna Devane, I couldn't be Anna. I'm sorry. I would have stormed that motherfucking clinic. Fuck that. Victor need to get new security staff. That's all I'm saying, because he got some punk ass security. I would have stormed that clinic. In all seriousness, I would have stormed that clinic. I would have went up in that clinic with guns blazing. But the problem is she ain't got no jurisdiction in that town and she ain't had no backup. I was like, God damn it, Anna. I don't care. I would have had some backup. Fuck that. I would have brought half the PCPD SWAT team with me. Fuck that shit. They got my detectives in there. They got females in there. I would have went up in there guns blazing the hell with it. Fuck that. I would have been on some Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, lethal weapon type shit. Fuck that. My my approach to things is storm the castle. Fuck it. You know what I mean? I understand she don't know how many guards they got in there, but the, Victor got punk ass guards in there anyway. Them guards are pussies. Please. 
You got Maxi running around the fucking security, the, the facility. Where are the guards? Nathan knocked one of the guards out and he was both hands handcuffed and he still got one of the guards down. Please. I would have came in there both guns blazing. Fuck that. So Anna decided to just go in there and say, fuck it. Finally took out her gun and decided to go in there. Thank God. Um, But she should have told the boy in the truck to call some backup. Shit, get some backup there. Fuck that. Even though those guards are a bunch of pussies, but whatever. So Stavros. Stavros is a sick bastard. So he wants to inject Lulu with some hormone drug or whatever so he could get her pregnant. Well, Lulu did always say she wanted another baby. So here's your chance. Um, even Victor, Stavros' uncle, even he finds this whole plan ridiculous. And the only reason Victor is doing this is out of respect for his brother Mikos. But I'm like, even if Mikos was my brother, I still wouldn't do this for his son. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't do this because I think it's ridiculous and it's crazy. And why is he doing another favor just because out of respect for Mikos? Mikos has been dead for, what, 33 years now? The dude is bones now. He's a skeleton now. It ain't like he could come back from the grave and get revenge on you. The guy's dead. He's been dead for over 30 years. And he talking about something. He going to do this favor, another favor for um, Stavros. Hello, you brought him back from the dead. I would say that that's favors that, you know. To me, bringing him, his nephew back from the dead, that's favor enough. Trust me, that's a favor that ends all favors. And you're going to do him yet another favor. It's ridiculous. So they inject um, Lulu with the hormone. And he and Stavros informs Dante that he's going to be taking Lulu with him. If I was Dante, I would have hoped the fuck up. I would have broke the fuck out of those handcuffs. Fuck that. I would have been doing anything in my power to set free. The hell with it. Um. So meanwhile, Jason, they had to strap him down to the bed because he kept trying to fight to get out of the restraint. So they had to restrain him. Jesus Christ, this fucking storyline is just crazy in itself. I just want to see Helena. That's all I want to see. I'm sorry, but I just want to see my girl. Like, can we get down with it and bring Helena on, please? Um. So anyway, I think that's everything in this episode. Tell me what y'all think about today's episode. Uh, we'll talk about it in the comments. I will see all of you Monday. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday.